Hey everyone's Dave here, welcome to Body of Mine Experience. It's past halfway mark for the Pride Month and it seems like we're getting, I think, first representation of queer media on the platform. But it is for you can be an external topic as well, but nowadays it's closely related to the trans folk. Too bad that the project itself isn't really a good representation of anything. So Body of Mine is an award winning, shocker here, VR immersive experience about personal interviews and stories of transgender individuals that talk about their journey with gender dysphoria, how they learned to love their body and what it means to be a human being on this planet. I can't relate to the concept for myself, but I do know people in my life that were concerned about that in the past and still kinda are. This experience, while having a decent message and some good information pieces, it completely falters in the execution. First of all, the art style is not unique at all, it's basically some basic assets thrown together that everybody can use. A paid experience, I don't know for what, like 20 minutes of pure gameplay that revolves around touching different parts of your body and listening to the voiceovers that aren't even recorded well because some are too quiet to hear and then the others not necessarily understandable without proper subtitles. No locomotion whatsoever, no exploration, you basically stand in one place in front of a mirror that shows couple avatars that would reflect you in some other universes and that's pretty much it. So. Very baffling that this project was so well received on the festivals, like for what reason? Maybe political ones? It's also like some screenshots show completely different clips that I did not see inside. So it was either generated or maybe some content was cut off for the release. From what I've seen, this is nothing that should be paid for, nor a good representation for the first queer topic. Like, it's just so weird to me. And sucks on all fronts, unless the devs will put up some work in the future here. <laughs> Let's discover some stories. Seems like a horror game again. <laughs> Uh -huh. Close your eyes with me. Relax your body, your heart, your breath. mind. Now open and imagine. A trans male is parking after taking estrogen. Eating periods is by annoying. What the? What if you had been born with a different sex? Each part of your body contains the story. Touch and hold them to listen. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> I feel like gender dysphoria feels like the inside of your clothes are sandpaper. Like, honestly. But it's like your skin and you can't escape it. No matter what you do. It's hard, it's hard. It sucks being a trans male who's pregnant because not a lot of people get it. They're like, oh, well, since you're carrying and since you're the one birthing, you're gonna be like the mom, you're gonna be like the woman. And I'm like, that's not how it is. I wanna be the baby's dad. Like on the birth certificate, since I'm legally a male, I'm gonna be the baby's dad. And I've already gotten a threat from them saying, if I just don't accept that I'm a woman, that they're just gonna take my baby away. 
Um, I would appreciate subtitles because some people's accents. Gender dysphoria for me, it's that feeling of you're waiting for something to happen, but it's not happening. You don't have an appetite to eat, but you still keep eating. Um, it's weird. At the end of the day, we're all performing. So just let me do my performance. Like I can't understand some of the words. Like I have boobs and naturally. And that's something that I guess like I want people to see me before they see my flesh suit. A flesh suit? With the environment, I think we are inside of a body. <laughs> Just like the game intends. Uh, what's left? <laughs> I have the urge to try to lower my voice as low as possible so that um, it could be it could pass like more masculine definitely every time you see there's like a second guess in the other people's eyes that just gives me a lot of gender dysphoria I mean I hope it's not the whole gameplay cause this can be done with just voiceovers which it is but why we're standing like I would appreciate moving around and stuff I've noticed it in my eyes. My eyes, they have gotten like, the way that they're shaped have gotten a little rounder. Um, and the fat in my face has kind of moved around and like now it's not as sharp of like a jaw. It's like more, I still have like a jawline that's pretty prominent, but like it's much softer. And like my facial features are a lot softer. It's also the recordings are not of the same quality, so some are louder, some are quieter. Also now I hear some discrepancy in the background. These past couple of days has been just really hard looking in the mirror because you can see, um, even if you know that it's gonna go away in a week, even if you know that you're doing progress, even if two days ago you felt the hardest person alive, seeing those small things can really bring you back in body hair, I feel that for me, it's so widespread in your body that you're not safe looking at any body part without having that fear of, oh my god, there's a patch, oh my god, I forgot to shave this area, oh my god. And it just, even if you pass, it's something that your brain subconsciously thinks, oh, that's gonna clog me. What's left? <laughs> I would appreciate some markings. I guess if something doesn't lit up. Often what happens in a hospital is like if they're if your genitalia looks like remotely like normal, then they just like assign you like male or female. But it's like they only ever like test you for like intersex qualities if like there's like a weird thing going on in your like phenotype and your like physical body but like i guarantee you if they tested every every baby like like actual hormones and like chromosomes like you would be surprised at how many people how much more people are intersex because right now 1.7 percent of the population is like intersex and like knows they're intersex and that's like the same amount of people with red hair so like i can only imagine what that number would be if everyone had to actually get tested When you're ready to move on, give yourself a hug. Okay. How does it feel having a body that's not your own? A body that doesn't move exactly the way you move, doesn't touch exactly where you touch doesn't exist where you exist. Is it confusing? 
frustrating, uncomfortable even? Is your body really misaligned? Or might that be the point? Not to think of it, I wish I would play this on the Pro. But I don't think it uses eye tracking, so... With realism, it would be like a different experience. I think with dysphoria, you can't really trust your brain. You can't trust an image, you can't trust a mirror. And I think that's a very scary thought sometimes to know that you have no idea what the real you looks like because your brain won't allow you to see it. But much like the existence of infrared light, there can be things outside the spectrum that just because you don't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. What now? I wish I could say, just be yourself unapologetically, like, go to the bathroom you feel comfortable in, like, do what you gotta do, like, I wish I could say that, but it's like, like, real security and, like, like, safety is such a big part of it, and unfortunately my advice is not to hide yourself, but do what you have to do to survive, and also to give yourself grace with that. Of course you're depressed. <laughs> of course you're super fucking anxious, but ultimately that's why I try and focus on like what makes me feel strong. How do I make myself feel strong in this? That's a word that I think is attainable rather than looking masculine or feminine. I'm a human being who's constantly trying to find power and strength within myself to let go of a lot of self-judgment and to set myself free from myself loving my body is a radical choice it's a radical practice and it's not something that comes easy Free. I am like a bird flying across the sky. I feel like I'm in a garden constantly. And that garden has such beautiful, beautiful flowers and trees and fruit. There's some scary things like snakes and bugs and spiders. What the? But I'm happy that I'm in a garden regardless. I'm happy that I get to be in the garden as a human being. I spend a lot of time, you know, healing that inner child and looking in the mirror and, and realizing that my body is like my superpower. Arguably, it'll never be what I want it to be, but at least I know I'm making the steps to be as fulfilled as possible in like the physical body I've been given. I am a human being with arms, two arms. I'm a human being with ten fingers and nails and skin and muscles, internal organs and lungs and a spirit and a voice. And I am here. I spend my life trying to find similarities rather than differences so that we can all grow together. I am a human being. I too have dreamt of what it would feel like to 
experience freedom to its fullest. I too have wondered what it's like to just exist without any pressure from the outside. But I think that in the end, what really makes me human is the things that we don't have in common. The things that we, that you and I don't share, but that we can share through communicating, speaking, touching, seeing, experiencing. But at the end of the day, I'm still me, and I represent much more than just my body. I represent everyone's body. Don't tell me that's the end. There's no way. Oh, that is so garbage. So like, what's happening here? We have this. Some information. Changing the perception. Yeah, that's it. No, I'm not a fan of that. And now it kicked me off to the main menu. Cool. <laughs> First of all, it doesn't utilize its own art style as visual experiences should, meaning with basic assets that are available to pretty much everyone. This is a paid experience with low quality visuals. You are standing in one place with a set number of avatars that are generated in front of you with some body kinetic movements, some things change the environment over time, but just overall, this might be the worst immersive experience I've seen so far on Quest. It sucks because this is one of the first, if not the first, queer apps out here and it just should have been so much better. The devs essentially put you in a static environment with no movement whatsoever and some voiceovers that also have different quality between each other. Some you hear clearly, some don't really understand the word, so subtitles would be appreciated. But even then, the project isn't justifiable price length. Nothing really. <laughs> Hate to trash it, but it really deserves it. I don't know why it got so many awards, but it means that the VR XR representation during the festivals was rather bad that year. 